You look like you're 13 years old right now in that beanie. Is, it, is the skateboard just out of frame? Yeah, the snowboard is all ready to go right after the show, dude. I'm the Marlboro Man, the manliest man in the world. Except for one secret, ain't no one know about me. My penis is a USB stick. You like fellatio? Woo! You like cuddlingus? Woo! What about those two things together? It's the summer of 16... <laughs> Hello and welcome to The Great Beyond, an Is This Good companion pod where I catch up with my friend and yours, Jason Doyle. Hello! Hi JD, thanks for coming and producing the show. Big news, she's thinking of switching to eggs, Rachel Doyle! <laughs> yeah, you, you've convinced me this time. <laughs> That's right. We were doing the classic uh, audio technician trick of when you want to get a mic check from someone before the show or before an interview, you ask them what they had for breakfast. The, the, the thinking being that it just happened to them, it'll be on the tip of their tongue, and it won't like burn or ruin any conversation you're going to have later, mm-hmm. I, unless you're interviewing John Kellogg, I suppose. <laughs> Uh, but also, has anyone ever, anytime I've ever asked anyone that question, they've gone, it's like, uh, all right, uh, yeah, just let me get a check on that mic. What'd you have for breakfast? It's always, uh... <laughs> now, what, you... well, I, normally I, I do eat breakfast, but I knew I had this thing coming up. And so I just, you know, I just wanted to go in on an empty stomach. Like no one's ever said, all right, let me just get a check on that mic. What'd you have for breakfast? Two eggs, avo toast, side of bacon. Yeah, here's the reason. It's because most of the time they've been put up in like the Four Seasons or whatever. You know, it, they're they're downtown. They're in New York. They're about to go on live TV, and that and they yes, they either didn't eat or there was some spread at the at the the Four Seasons or whatever. And I had a a scone, but yes, normally I would have you know my pablum with chopped slivered onions not onions uh <laughs> <laughs> Ew. what are you talking about slivered uh almonds close to onions oh, very close <laughs> so the oatmeal i make every morning is now pablum Fuck. okay <laughs> yeah that's that's exactly what it is i not that i don't appreciate you making oh it. yeah you know I don't like oatmeal. I know, but why do you keep eating it then? It's like, <laughs> you know I don't like oatmeal. <laughs> you... How long has she been making you oatmeal that you don't like? Uh, Are we talking years? That's more, more months, a week. Months. Least. It's um, been a few oh, months. It's oatmeal week? <laughs> it's oatmeal month. Yeah. Um, and yeah. I'm like, are you sure you want me to make it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, well, you're dry heaving and gagging on it and can barely get it down. It's so gross. Why am I making it? <laughs> it's not gross. Uh, okay, well, I'm going to ask you a question now, and if you don't give me the answer that I want, I'm hanging up this Zoom right now. <laughs> Dear God, tell me these oats are steel cut. I actually don't know. Are they? Oh, my God. <laughs> They're from the old Quaker guy. <laughs> not the steel oh, no. cut ones. Oh, is that why I don't like them? Is that why they're gross? They're not gross. They're just It's just oatmeal. Yeah. It's not instant, but it's, you know, I need to soak them overnight so it doesn't take too long. But they're not when you say guy. the old Quaker guy, you mean Wilford Brimley, right? <laughs> <laughs> Looks like him. Yeah, I am trying to avoid diabetes. How does he say it? Di- <laughs> diabetes. <laughs> Diabetes. Are you JD? Because you look you look like you're 13 years old right now in that beanie. Is it is the skateboard just out of frame? Yeah, yeah. The snowboard is all ready to go right after the show, dude. He's, he's got a white hoodie on. He's got like pot just piled. He just. Up. Stepped off the PJ in Aspen. Um, The other thing that I was going to, I was actually going to introduce you a different way, Rachel. I was going to say in producing the show, her little boy is all grown up, Rachel Doyle. Yeah. You know what I'm referring to? Not not JD because he's he's Benjamin Buttoning. But your boy got into college. He did. It's a, he was very shocked as were we because this was his fantasy school that is kind of a long shot i mean georgia tech mm-hmm. and he did early admission so you know that's a relief he uh he got a special pathway so he oh come on you don't leave the caveats out of it he got yeah, into what, georgia what tech what special pathway that sort of sounds like you bribed someone <laughs> <laughs> well they give out a certain number of special pathways and 
this is still early admission, so it's pretty fucking cool. He he has a, a spot reserved for 2025, so he goes in second year, and he finish he does his degree second, third, and fourth year there. So he has to do his first year somewhere else. What? That this doesn't sound like this... a very special pathway. Yeah, this is like it it's is. so special that you can't. Uh, let me get. If I give someone a special invitation to a party, and then yeah. I say, Sh- "Show up in the last forty-five minutes." Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh, I'd like to give you a special invitation to my wedding. Please it's don't exclusive. show up for the ceremony. Exclusive. Show up for dessert, dessert and dancing. It's very special. This is, it's like David Spade talking about being invited to the Met. But his time window was after midnight, like after everybody had already <laughs> left, you know, like all the A-listers the are gone. The B-listers are gone. What's that? The Met Gala you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah. But oh, because there, there was a point where he was famous enough to get invited and he was on the A-list, but then he just keeps getting knocked back and back and back until finally it's like, uh, you got to show up between uh, twelve ten and uh, one fifteen uh, after the party's over, basically. Right, right. That's that's when the custodian will start. We we need you to just put on a jumpsuit and really just pitch in here. Um, <laughs> exactly. Look. This okay. Is so then, where is he going to go for the this first is very year? Sexy. Well, he's been. Um, he's already been admitted to a couple of other schools. He just has to go to another school that has his program. So engineering, he has to go to a school that offers engineering, do first year foundations with them, and then jump into second year at, at Georgia Tech, which it is engineering kind of starts in second year. You know what I'm saying? I still I don't understand yeah, this at you all. See, I, you I, see, like I don't want to get bogged down in it because. Well, yeah, exactly, Matt. Exactly. This is exactly what I didn't want her to do. <laughs> it's like, goes, congratulations but, but on said, the big news. <laughs> well, actually, thank you very much. It is a big deal, but there is this one little caveat. <laughs> Look, it's exciting regardless. <laughs> you guys are shitheads. <laughs> Um, <laughs> oh, my boy got into Georgia Tech. We're so excited. Ah, so he'll be there next year, you know, freshman year? Well, not really. Well, didn't you just say he got in? I did. Well, what did you mean? Well, he got a special pathway. Oh, it's special. He'll be starting early. No, not quite. Later. Later. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, I think this was one of my favorite uh, Abbott and Costello bits. Um, <laughs> special admission to Georgia Tech. It's, it is a good one. Uh, well, anyways, congratulations to him. I guess the only thing I need to know is, are you going to be the kind of parents that have like Georgia Tech swag and sweatshirts and we bumper got stickers? It. Already got it. So the day already got it. Day of, she went down and dropped five hundred bucks in the bookstore. Well, there's this. This is the thing. This <laughs> no, is the no thing. wonder it's Steel Cut Oat Month. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, fo- followed by <laughs> can of beans. <laughs> can of beans winter solstice. <laughs> Look, it wasn't my choice. Lincoln has been taunted by a few of his fellow classmates about how his, you know. His marks aren't as good as theirs. Well, it turns out they're not. That's why he has to do this special pathway. But he is such a sexy candidate. He is. That they are like, we are reserving this spot for you because everything Mm -hmm. else about you is what we want. So come in this year. Go to the other school the first year. You are a yellow jacket. Anyway, he wanted to flex on people. So right, that's huh? what he did. We, he got a sweater and he's flexing on the haters. Yeah, but you came home with mugs. You came home with a cardigan for me, which I appreciate. It's a nice cardigan. I will wear it. But it's just You could have said no. You're right. I asked. You're right. You're right. I don't think you should be allowed to wear it until his special pathway year Mm-mm. kicks in. Now, I, as a child, I remember um, I would get the special pathway at the, the local movie theater, you know, when I would buy a ticket. <laughs> Uh, and then when that movie would end, I would take the special pathway into another movie. That's it. <laughs> well, or sometimes, if the, if it would be an R-rated movie, I would I would take the special pathway by buying a movie to a PG-13 one. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, we're very proud. Of we're very proud. We're you very guys proud. Are assholes. Here, Let's no, just no, leave I am very that. proud of him. Very and, proud. Of him. So I guess he's not going to Canada then. I was holding out hope for that. No, this is too big thrill he uh uh oh i just pressed something <laughs> everyone okay everyone okay yeah okay. <laughs> we're all still here yeah, we're all here <laughs> we're good are we tick, still tick, recording tick. looks like it okay, okay great good. Okay, uh, great. yeah no this is too uh, this is 
ex- this is what he wanted. And yeah, he's very happy. He specifically said he wanted to not start in the <laughs> first year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh <Okay. laughs> oh my God. Uh, who okay. was it was it gordon hayward the guy uh the basketball player he, he was at his fourth gender reveal you know yeah. and uh he has three yes. daughters and the gender reveal was oh Congratulations, fourth daughter. He's like, God damn. Like, he didn't say it, but he was like, ah. he, you, His whole body deflated. Obviously thrilled that he's having another child come into Not, his life. He w- wasn't really that thrilled, to oh, be honest. Yeah, but it was very, like, his body language was just like, oh, God damn it. That's how it sort of was when I told my parents, because I think they were really hoping that he would go to U of T or one of the Canadian schools, and they're, like, happy for him, thrilled, obviously, but, but still, like, ah. Georgia Tech is ranked number two in the country for mechanical engineering. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. Uh, it wins. I'm the proud parent of a Georgia Tech yellow jacket. Put that, bu- take that Bernie Sanders bumper sticker off the off the Rav Four, Rachel. It's time. Oh God, she's got a Georgia Tech mug. I, I, it is a nice full circle moment because when we moved to America in 2013, mm-hmm. one of the first buildings we saw was Georgia That's Tech. That's true. We worked across the street. Yeah. Yeah, and it was like, holy shit! Look at the the basketball arena, and their basketball team sucks. Like, imagine well, if Chris Bosh, Chris Bosh, Chris Bosh went to Tech. Yes, you don't know enough about it to say they suck. You're gonna get they do some stink. Shit. They stink. Right Me now, know. they stink. Mm. They stink. They now. probably do stink now. It's yeah. uh, and it's not as good a conference, but I don't think. Um, now, are, are you also gonna be the parents that are drunk on a Saturday, like tailgating for the football game? Yeah, yeah, we have to. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and we'll be, we'll <laughs> we be that. Uh, what? We'll be. We'll we'll do the same wherever he goes first year. We'll be like, well, we're just going with the party. Who cares? <laughs> where it but is. don't you think Lincoln's a little alt, like yeah. in a good way? Yeah, I don't think he's gonna necessarily be rah rah football. Man. I don't know. I, it's been around us for like ten years now. Mm. I think we're all sort of. We all want a piece of it. You know what I mean? Subconsciously, we just want to blend in and be a yeah, part of yeah, the culture. Assimilate. Yeah. And that and and just glomming on to whatever, you know, Bulldogs are great, obviously. I mean, I don't mm. think they got Go him. Dogs. Sick him. Go, Sick go him Dogs. dogs. Um, you know, it, we could have easily just been like, okay, well, that's our college team, and then we'll just get into it that way. But now we actually have a college that he's going to go to, maybe, well, at least third, fourth, Third, yeah. second, third, fourth year. I mean, here's the thing. If he gets into UGA, Bulldog, there's a chance that he just goes, I'm having way too much fun at UGA. Yeah, he's in Athens. He's not as close to you guys. Yeah, yeah. He's hanging out with Michael Stipe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, really? Son, if, if you see a 60-year-old bald man, I'd like you to befriend him. <laughs> Does he live in Athens? Well, they're from. Uh, they're from. Uh, I'm sure, he has a house there. Yeah. Maybe he must. Well, Who's we should to talk Who's to, to our. We should talk to our stipe and find out. Yeah, uh, talk to our stipe. Um, before we go on, does the phrase "office burgers" mean anything to you? Office burgers. Office burgers. <laughs> like no, no. I've never heard yeah. it before. I'm okay. using. Yeah, I'm crossing but... it off. Me neither. I, I send myself emails when I think of something for the show. <laughs> And I just, uh, in the subject line, I'll just put ITG. So that's yeah. know, what, in the new world, we might call a tag. Yeah. And uh, so I'll do ITG dash office burgers. So or just... like, in, you know, I did ITG dash uh, Lincoln School. You know, right. just to remind myself, okay. like I saw you tweeting about how he got into school. I wanted uh-huh. to ask you about it. Okay. Um, Normally, I know what they mean, but this one just said ITG office burgers. Like office donuts sort of thing, where it's just like, hey, it's we're having... Free burgers in the break room, that kind of thing. <laughs> Maybe. I mean, I, this, uh, that's sus because then I looked at the date and it was Friday. Okay. And I was not in an office. I was in a warehouse, but I did not see anyone eating a burger. Yeah. Weird. Okay. All right. Well, if anyone knows what office burgers are, <laughs> you let me know. But but speaking of offices, yes. it's the season for office Christmas parties. Yes. And you just had, you work in an office of uh, four people. Uh, for six people, really, if you count um, our auxiliary members, uh, we have a, a satellite uh, station up in Toronto with Jerome, mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. Eshwa we have uh, as well. 
Uh, yeah, and we had our annual Christmas party, and it was a banger. It was fun. How, how does this go down? So, you, so you're it's you're six people, then plus plus wags. wives, girlfriends. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you're eleven or twelve people. Yeah, and. Who is organizing this? Who's setting the menu? Who's oh. doing the reservation? Uh, great question. Um, Nora. Nora. She was all Nora over did, every, uh, did all of it. Respect, and, Nora. And we were late place. to the game as well. Nora, like, you didn't used to have to do that, Nora. <laughs> <laughs> but now that I'm not in Atlanta anymore, no, who yeah. else is going to do that? Yeah, you're right. Because I think it was even her who was like, uh, we should, you guys should probably have like a Christmas dinner yeah, or something. Yeah, she suggested it. <laughs> and then uh, it was like, oh, yeah. Yeah, let's do that. And then, of course, it was like you know, late November or whatever, but she called around and got us in, got us a private room. At a oh, very, it's a private room? A, well, it was, yeah, it was more of an enclave. Like, yeah, it was private because there were curtains that were closed that we ended up opening because it was so fucking hot in there. And yeah. then they came back and closed them again. I think they were like, no, we want you in this room. <laughs> and we closed. want you separated because we were getting loud. Um but uh, yeah, and the, and the th- th- thin layer of polyester is keeping that noise at bay. Yeah, 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 exactly. Uh, what was the place called? I can't remember. Well, you went to Tiny Lou's. Tiny Lou's, yeah, yeah, Tiny Lou's in the, yes. the, the Claremont. Uh, the Claremont. Where's the strip club? Because I thought it was there. I thought it was there, too. It's below, but... below deck. But it's we below were underneath. we were in uh... the basement. No, you go, you go outside. There's stairs going uh, even further down, and then the entrance so is in the totally back. it's totally separate. Oh. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. I, assuming it's still there, which I do assume that it is. Yeah, I thought it was there too, but um, okay. anyway, so you it didn't was, go to the Claremont. After. We did not go to the Claremont, unfortunately. It was, it was actually pretty late. Claremont Lounge. Mm-hmm. Uh, so um, I heard you you saying on No Dunks that you were drinking, or you had a lot of drinks. Let's put it that way. I had a few drinks, yeah, but it was a Christmas uh-huh. party, and I was testing. Yeah, I mean, I'm not this. coming. It's not like last show where I accused you of being too drunk. <laughs> I'll never do that again. It's the angriest you've ever been at me. He no, Matt, when he is beyond blasted and we come home, I'm like, oh my God, settle down. You're clearly wasted. He'll, no, he will never admit to being drunk. Even when he's like can barely walk. It's like no barely walk. When's that? Oh my God. It doesn't matter, but he will never admit to it. So never. Okay. But you said that you you didn't get hung over or you did but you went to pickleball at eight in the morning anyways all for an ad <laughs> oh so you did okay so it's interesting because you're hawking a hangover remedy i was supposed to go to play well pickleball. listen hey i don't know li- well this is a separate show um <laughs> so <laughs> i guess i can talk about there's a lot of caveats in this this copy that we're supposed to read and you're not allowed to say a hangover Oh, not allowed to say not remedy. allowed to say hangover. No, no. Oh, no. that's why you're saying elixir. <laughs> well, uh, what? Yeah, I was just looking for things to say, but that's what it is. It's like a little bio. right, 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 right. And here's a, here's another thing. Here's another thing. This product is to uh, it's to alleviate nausea. I think. Mm-hmm. I never really get nauseous like from a hangover. My problem is a headache, <clears throat> which it really. Oh, well, these people are too good for Dramamine or Gravol. <laughs> That's an anti-nausea. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's supposed to. This is a, it, it's supposed herbs, to a mix of it. a proprietary blend of herbs and yeah. magnesium. No, and it's not like even that. that. It's a, it's actually genetically engineered enzyme that that. Oh, is it? Is it? Okay, this is what the question that I wanted to ask you, or it's not a question. I, I guess it's a statement. <laughs> We're gonna find a cure for cancer before we find a cure for a hangover. Oh, wait. there's no cure. Would you, Matt? Wait till the next. The next thing that's coming down the pike is hilarious. What they want us to sell? It's literally air. <laughs> <laughs> like in um, fucking spaceballs. <laughs> Remember, uh, yeah. Mel Brooks is the yeah. president. He's instead of Perrier, it's Arier. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so we're uh, we got a message on our on Slack saying, "Hey, FYI, there's this thing coming to your house." It looks like a vape. It's not a vape. It's just flavored air. And we're like, uh, okay. okay. I mean, <laughs> so so what if what if Jewel, but instead of tobacco, um, what's inside a candle? Yeah, basically. I think I think the the idea of it is, you know, if you're trying to quit smoking and you sort of want that fidgety. Oh thing. yeah 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 yeah. So yeah. Th- that part of it, I, I get. You for know sure. who should be hawking that? Jewel. 
Jewel Kilcher? The singer. <laughs> the singer. <laughs> I, I mean, I could see it. What did I just? It's. I'm just. You're reminding me of something because I just. Is it possible that Kevin Costner and Jewel are married or dating? Hmm. Oh, I swear to God, I saw that headline and went like, Kevin Costner is dating Jewel. Hmm. Anyways, that's uh, that's neither here nor there. All right, so you're selling flavored air. <laughs> yeah, but um, again, we might get this thing, and I become addicted to it, and I love it. So you well. Know. I doubt yeah, it. No, I understand but... it for quitting smoking. Yeah. Because I also thought on Juul, you can go, you can choose the um, saturation of the nicotine in the vape. Mm-hmm. So let's say like you're starting at 20% of this is nicotine. Then you can go down to 10, then to 5, then whatever, which really right. does make sense. I mean, that's at oh, least how the patch works too. Right. Yeah. But, Our Juul, Juuls are gone though, right? Uh, I still see them, but like, yeah. Can you still buy them? Yeah, I, I thought you couldn't, but I swear I've seen them since then. Yeah. And this is in the nanny state of California oh, where... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's so many vape and smoke shops here that, like, I don't know. I, I feel like you could find anything, but... Yeah. Have it, so, wait, have you done... Uh, you, have you used a jewel before? I've... I have sucked upon one. I've sucked with the teat. <laughs> like, a, like a flavored one or, like, just a straight up nicotine? Like, I don't... I've never... Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nicotine vape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. if you're with someone and they have one, you're like... Yeah, yeah, give me that. Right. <laughs> give, me, give me that. But was I'm it- joking. I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> that is a meme that will not die in this house, by the way. But anyways, uh, yeah, but was it like a strawberry shortcake flavor or mango? Uh, or no, I like the one that I do like uh, is, a, I think it's just called American Tobacco. Oh, yeah. so it's just like, and it tastes, tastes like, like your, a fucking ash. Tastes, it tastes like you're <laughs> blowing the Marlboro Man. <laughs> <laughs> that was not it's as, if the, Jason. <laughs> as if a Marlboro man's it. penis Marble. could fit in a USB <laughs> yeah he's heavy hung for sure yeah. I'm the Marlboro man the manliest man in the world except for one secret ain't no one know about me my penis is a USB stick <laughs> <laughs> yummy that'd be uh, uh, hilarious uh, have you, uh, but I, just, of, I was just gonna just find it funny all these like hangover cures. It's yeah, like yeah. because it's just like if you're dehydrated and you were gonna sell me a product to cure me of my dehydration, I'd be like, is it water? <laughs> yeah, like because that's what like you can't give me a cure for burning myself on a hot stove. I mean, the cure right. is me not doing it. Yeah, I mean, I guess you could. I guess burn. <laughs> Yeah, therapies do exist. Teen. If you put ice on that burn for literally five hours, it will not blister. Yeah. Right. So, so the cure for putting my hand on a hot stove is ice. Right. For a very long, now, long time. Now this. But what about a proprietary blend of ice? <laughs> you, wow. A little salt in there. A little electrolytes. Um, the this specific product claims or tells us that it's not the dehydration that may cause causes the. Oh. The rough morning. It's this. The it's this toxin that's produced when you're when a, that alcohol is becoming in your in your stomach, and this enzyme attacks it. If you found out that it was actually camel sperm that you were drinking and it worked, would you continue to take it? If it worked, <laughs> why why did that come to your brain out of curiosity? <laughs> I'm just wondering what it would take to have him consume that, and I think he would take anything that got rid of your headaches. If it yeah, got, I would. If it got rid of my headache, sure. What do I care? Yeah, huh? I mean, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. You'd get a pet take camel. It raw. Yeah, I wouldn't. I'm not getting it from the camel. <laughs> you might get a pet camel to save on the price. I don't think that would save any money at all if we had a fucking I, pet. I, I would. Pest. I would actually say that more people would buy it, Rachel, because it's like, what if if someone's like, we legitimately found a cure for hangovers, yeah. and it's like, if you said, oh, it's um. You know, it's a, it's a bit of sodium mixed with this powder and whatever. People would be like, ah, I'm not sure. But if right. you're like, it's camel jizz, people would be like, <laughs> Ooh. that's why we haven't figured it out yet. Natural. Straight from the camel. All you got to yeah, do is and, blow this camel. And, and it would be like, um, <laughs> they would sell, like, it would be like a goop thing, frankly. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, Pardon the would pun. Be like, it, <laughs> going to be the fluffer though uh, you gotta... Gwyneth, Paltrow, <laughs> Gwyneth Paltrow starting a new men's company called Splooge <laughs> <laughs> I 
Oh, sir, no, the splooge is ne- this is goop. Splooge is next door. <laughs> Uh, well, speaking of splooge, let's get to this next topic, which I am so excited to discuss. You sent this to me. Brian Adams. <laughs> yes. Brian Adams. Canadian treasure. Famous Canadian treasure, uh, singer-songwriter. He's been waking up the neighbors, uh, and he's running his mouth about how the song Summer of 69, pro- one of his most famous songs, yeah. easily, um, is about literally 69 so he he just gave an interview to the daily mail where he was like uh i was gonna call it the best days of my life which is a a line from or a refrain from the song but he's like i thought 69 a a 69 reference was funnier and cheekier and (laughs) and he was like i literally at the end of the song say me and my lady in a 69. He's like, I don't know how, what, why are you even asking me if it's about 69? It's, you have to be, I think he said you have to be pretty thick not to realize that this is about the sex act. Right. And I am here to say, this is bullshit. This is a 100% bullshit. Yes. There's no way that I thought it was about 69ing. Right. At all. Right. I mean, right. I, there is that line at the very end of the song where he goes, me and my baby in 69. That felt like a little wink. Like <laughs> I know yeah, what exactly. I know what you're thinking, but mm-hmm. what I'm not thinking of it's it, this song is not about that. It's just a wholesome song about when I was. I guess we did the math back in the day. He probably was eight years old. <laughs> no, ten. He was born we, in fifty nine. Okay, all right. So there you go. So that part of it is fiction, but it sounds fun to say sixty nine. The the summer. Yeah, it also of rhymes. He it, 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 he did a talking to Davy, who's still in the navy. Yeah, like yeah. Got my first real six string, bought it the five and dime, played it till my fingers bled. It was the summer of, it has to end in nine. Right. Yeah. So are we to, uh, to assume that he was flicking that bean until Ew. his his fingers bled? Is that what he's well, that's, referring to? That's my to? point. Is yes. It, it all falls apart. The whole, there's no metaphor here. No. <laughs> Me and some guys from school. Had a band and we tried and real hard. And we tried hard. real hard. <laughs> it's the worst line in the song. <laughs> <laughs> Me and some guys from school had a band. We put in good effort. <laughs> and then Jimmy quit. Jody got married. He's specifically naming people that were in this band. Yeah. I should have known we never get far. That, now, that's why the hard line to rhyme with far. Yeah, hard and far don't don't rhyme. And well, But I guess neither does dime and nine, technically. Okay, yeah. Uh, but if, if, if I was to be charitable to Brian Adams... I would say that what he means is like he's capturing the excitement of your first maybe sexual summer. Okay. Sure. And that and the 69 is like um a stand-in for that. I guess. That's an advanced move for your first summer of oh, yeah. of of love. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's who's, a good point. <laughs> who's loving that move anyway? Like are you really doing the best job you can when you're getting it at the same time? Like yeah. I need pure focus to do a good job. Right. You're, you're, this song should be called Awkward HJ. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <that's Yes>. <laughs> Me and my baby in an awkward HJ. Hand her mouth. Who's uh, to say? Another potential title Summer of. Uh, ow! That, I think that is your teeth. <laughs> <laughs> Braces. Aye. <laughs> <laughs> So, I mean, like, also because... So, so first of all, the song was co-written by him. So, this guy, Jim Valance, mm-hmm. in the article, um, was his songwriting collaborator. And he says, I don't pretend to speak for Brian. Two of us wrote the song, though. Maybe he was thinking about something completely different. <laughs> but I was thinking about that amazing summer when I turned 17. <laughs> so, he was obviously older in 69 right. than Brian Adams. Right. So, what... Maybe, <laughs> what 10-year-old is... Yeah. Maybe dur- you, during this session that, that he just kept trying to say, and they're 69-ing. You know? <laughs> it's like, like okay, okay, Brian, Brian, okay, Brian. <laughs> Brian, fucking calm down, buddy. Go okay. back off and come back <laughs> in, okay? Jimmy quit. Jody got married to go 69. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, uh, Brian... 
uh, just I know we're starting the session here. I came in with some ideas. Like I want to kind of kind of capture that halcyon feeling of like that first summer. You start a band with your friends, and you kind of think like, "Wow, we really got something here. We're gonna go far." But but of course you don't. <laughs> Uh, and so it's like, I got my first real six string. I bought it at the five and dime. I played it till my fingers bled. Ah, uh, then you, your girlfriend sucked your dick while you were going down on her at the same time? Uh, no, no, then well, I took the bus and we went to band practice. Um, and just the four of us being in that room, it was electric. Cause you all blowing each other? No, 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 no. Cause kind of like the feeling of like, guitar, bass, drums, when they come together, it's greater than the sum of their parts, and that's just such an amazing feeling that you're making... He's literally being like Beavis. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You still well, got well, a song credit for it. That's great. Yeah. That's great. But if it wasn't the summer of 69, why did the six-string guitar... Co- why were you able to buy it at a five and dime? You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. If, I, if, if Brian Adams was on the stand, that's what I'd ask yeah. him. <laughs> Sir, so what year did you buy the guitar at the five and dime? <laughs> Anyways, he, I, I, I did some research, and apparently, he literally did buy his first guitar at a five and dime. Huh. Isn't that cool? That is kind of cool. Uh, he said, this is a quote, I bought an imitation Les Paul at a five and dime store in Ottawa, Canada in 1971. Hmm. Cool. Ooh. Oh, hey, is that an imitation Les Paul over there? (laughs) Well, I was thinking about playing a Stratocaster A, but uh, I don't know. Not so much a Clapton fan, more of a a Jimmy Page guy myself, eh? Oh, Oh, there you go. Do you take loonies and toonies? (laughs) Have you ever seen Brian Adams live? No. Yeah, I mean, I don't think so. I feel like if he would, if if this song was about sixty nine in, like he would start, he would introduce it Paul Stanley style, like yo like sixty nine in. <laughs> Everybody, <laughs> like, yeah! you know what I mean. It would be part of his patter, his his uh, his banter before the song. He'd get people riled up for it, but he's never said that, never. You like fellatio? <laughs> Woo! You like cuddlingus? <laughs> Woo! What about those two things together? It's the summer of 16. 16- <laughs> <laughs> I'm a 55 year old man and goddamn it, <laughs> that makes me so excited. <laughs> <sighs> It's this did the one thing it did remind me of um, you know start me up by the Rolling Stones yeah which is you know played at every sports game every arena every stadium yeah remember you know it's like you make a grown man cry like keep saying that yeah. but then at the very end of the song he says you make a dead man come what yeah. yes <laughs> you make a dead man come. <laughs> Well, that song is about sex. Like, nobody's yeah. pretending that's not about sex. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> you With a dead body. Yeah, that's <laughs> great. Ew. Uh, okay. Uh, good times. Good stuff there. Uh, you ever, you ever like, learn something that makes you question what else you don't know because it's, like, seemingly so obvious in retrospect? Yes, every day. Uh, yeah. Every day. Okay, so... Yesterday, uh, Joel came home from work with some, like, British treats. Oh, okay. Mm. Uh, and so I was like, what is this? She was like, well, this, there's this guy at the office. He's, uh, he's British. Mm-hmm. And so his mom just sent him a care package of, like, all this, um, you know, like, quality street. Yep. A, a lot of these feel Canadian to me because, uh, yeah. obviously, the British culture in Canada. But I guess they, they are traditionally British things. So, like, British cookies, British sweets, as mm-hmm. they might call them. Mm-hmm. And then she was like... Uh, and um, uh, there was a, a mince mince meat pie. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I was like, "What for dessert?" And she's like, "Yeah." I was like, "Meat pie for dessert?" And she's like, "You don't know what mince meat is." Yeah. And I was like, "Yeah, I do. <laughs> uh, it's chopped up meat. Do do I? <laughs> <laughs> it's meat that's minced." Because I know I know the British do have a tradition of meat pies, right? Yeah. Like a Cornish pasty or what, yeah. whatever they call yeah, yeah. it over there. Mm-hmm. Um, she's like, I don't think you do, do because a mincemeat pie 
is like apples, raisins, yeah. dried fruit, cinnamon, nutmeg, cloves, that kind of shit. It's like the fruit cake of pies. We had that every Christmas. My dad loved it. I never touched it. Well, yeah, yeah. So, so you knew this? Mm-hmm. Yeah, this one, uh, okay. this one, we did know. Okay, sorry, but it's because you're British. You're your British heritage. Yeah, I was say I, I'm as well. I guess I'm more British than you. My mother was born in Belfast. But you yeah. lived in a British colony. Well, she would hate for... to hear that. What? British? Yeah, no, you're right. She did. Well, I don't know. I can't. I don't know where she landed on the whole. <laughs> she <don't know> where... <laughs> the whole occupation. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Mom, I just wanted to get your quick take on the troubles. Um, anyways, apparently, it, I did look it up because, of course, I, I couldn't be wrong. I mean, I was obviously a hundred percent wrong. But it, right. it did used to be meat. It did used to be meat oh, okay. in the Middle Ages. Yeah. Uh, like, and then the meat slowly got added out. Or subbed out, and now it's not it has nothing to do with me. Some like traditional rep- recipes call for a suet. Oh, mm. suet. Suet. I uh, guess. Yeah, and I had to look that up too because I didn't know what that was, and that's just fat from a cow's kidneys, which of course, oh, yeah. I didn't. I know that, <laughs> but that's not really meat. I mean, that's just cooking with like lard or, or like beef tallow or something, yeah, right? Yeah. It's, it's not. There's no minced meat. No. But like, did the phrase? Now I'm wondering. Did the phrase? What am I, minced meat? Like, is that a phrase you've heard before? Or is, it feels uh, that maybe Jewish? Oh, well, that does sound familiar, actually. Yeah. Like, you know, what am I, chopped liver? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But there's I'm also, not, what am I, minced meat? I've never heard that. Hmm. Maybe that's it's an Makes Austin sense. special. <laughs> like your family? like <laughs> Or just you. Yeah, or maybe you. it's germane just to my family. I've definitely heard people say, what am I, minced meat? Like, okay. why I do I feel I left too. out? I think I have Set too. aside. But maybe it, what it really means is something fake. Or cheap. Or inauthentic, you know? Like uh, you're pretending to be something that you're not. Right. Because you're minced meat. Yeah. But you're really It could be anything. Carries. It could be any minced meat thrown in there. Yeah. Yeah. Could be anything. Anyways, minced meat. Don't want it, but at least Did I she know try it? it? Now. Uh, no, but she does like freaky shit like that. Like she keeps asking me when we're going to get, um, what's the Christmas thing called? I have fruit. Pop, oh. Fruit cake, fruit, fruit, fruit cake, yeah, yeah. She's what like, "Oh, mean? when are we getting the fruit cake?" I'm like, "Never." When are you I mean, getting it? What does that mean? Like going to pick it up, sort of thing? Yeah, I guess she just keeps asking me about fruit cake. I think the only way it's good is if it's like thinly sliced and you have cheese on it. Like it's almost like a cracker with like a to get the cheese into you. But then wouldn't you have to toast it? <laughs> Otherwise, wouldn't it crumble? But I think sometimes it's pretty, it's pretty hard. It's pretty hard. Like you dense. can have a fr- a fruit cake for months. Liquored up, the, the stuff that sits for like a year before you actually eat it. Yeah. Right. Isn't that the thing that it's like shelf stable? Like yeah. you could put it away for the whole year? Because yeah. it's got lots of booze in it, doesn't it? I don't know. I, I don't yeah. want it. You're not making it sound better to me, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can, we'll, get, we'll get you a slice. How's that, Jill? <laughs> I'll have some with her. <laughs> okay. We'll fly down. We'll get, we'll get the, meat, the meat pie and the... Uh, yeah. Yeah. The fruit pie and what's the what's the the dish that you said you make that's very um rappy pie rappy pie pie, rapper oh my god I can't rapper pie pie. (laughs) parappa the rapper pie (laughs) don't rape let's get to some quick housekeeping and just a warning as always I may or may not sprinkle some content throughout it might happen you don't know you don't know that's what makes this housekeeping the most exciting in the biz I still want your is this good grievances or just your um, your holiday grievances. So I want to know what's upset you this year, anything on your mind, anything troubling you. Send those along with any other questions to isthisgoodpod at gmail.com. And if you'd like to support the show, go to patreon.com slash isthisgood where you'll get free ad-free episodes. You'll get access to our thriving community on Discord where you can tell me that I pronounced our guest names uh, guest name wrong. <laughs> <laughs> or did you? Or did I? Yeah, we had uh, Steffi Bake, or so I thought, B-A-I-K. She is Korean. Mm-hmm. And... I pronounced her name Steffi Bake on the show. I've listened to her podcast, and I'm pretty sure I've, I'd heard that before, but Lawrence in our Discord. Yeah. who I'm not sure. Is he Korean? I can't remember if he said, but... Anyways, he said I pronounced it wrong. It's more like Beck, and I was pronouncing right. it in the Americanized way. But then someone else literally shared a screen grab from Steffi's website that said, Steffi Bake, and then <laughs> under it in small letters, it said, like Bake. Right. B-A-K-E. Her, and her Instagram is Baked Goods. Ah. Baked Goods. Yeah. But then everyone in the Discord said that she Americanized it, and she's wrong. 
Oh, she's <laughs> wrong about her own name. <laughs> she's wrong about her own name. <laughs> well, Lauren, uh, Lawrence do... might be correct about that, but no, she... he's one hundred percent correct. Yeah. But it's a, you come to America, and just like you, you want to go to the college football stadium. That's right. You want to assimilate. I want to assimilate. Yeah. But it was a great episode. Some people are saying one of the best. Yeah, it was great. Uh, she was very charming, um, and we cut a lot of the, out a lot of great stuff out of that just to keep just to keep the length down, and it was. Uh... It was great. She was very charming. She came. She was very, very open. Very which open. Which you love in open a guest. Book. It's the best. The best thing about a guest is when they're open. And now I do have to find. I have to find her someone to date. Right. <laughs> oh, you're actually taking it on. Yeah. Do, you did. No, I'm not. I'm not. But I just. I feel like I got to know someone in this city. There's like yeah. 10 million people. Did here. you ask what who she prefers? Men, women, both? Because that'll open up your. I, well, uh, she was definitely she... talking about dating men. Oh, okay. Yeah. She was dating a Canadian guy named Gord. I think <laughs> we named him that. Gord. <laughs> <laughs> you think Gord ever bought an imitation Les Paul in, <laughs> in Ottawa, Ottawa, Ontario? Well, it's the nation's capital. A lot of people don't know that, eh? <laughs> Based on um, her description of him, 100%. This guy has a Les Paul, for sure. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Hey, and also, don't forget, it's friendly December, JD. I keep forgetting, but thank you for reminding me. So what do you have to do to, to participate in Friendly December? I, I, it's a review, <laughs> uh, I, I, right? No, it's not a review. It's oh. not a review. Oh. Oh. Uh, oh, tell a friend. You'd have to tell three friends yes. about this particular you show. Tell three friends about this particular show. <laughs> not like the one we're recording now, but oh, is this good? I can't keep track of all of our activations. Initiatives and activations. That's right. So was it three <laughs> I mean, or five friends that we land on? Uh, no, well, went from one to three. Oh, yeah. Three friends. Three friends. Tell three friends. Yeah. Or family members. You're going to see them around the holidays. Exactly. Exactly. Bring up um, some of these topics and then say, hey, you know where I got all these fire topics? From this woo, great where? show I listened to. It's called Is This Good? You should check it out. In fact, give me your phone. I'm going to subscribe you right away. And that's what, that's how you do it. I did that when we were home. I was like, just give me your phone. Yeah. Done, done, oh, done, excellent. done, Thank done. You, Rachel. If, if you're at home and you happen to hear the Brian Adams classic, <laughs> Summer of 69, <laughs> you now have some great conversation fun. They might unsubscribe after that. Your mother. <laughs> Thanks, Rachel. Uh, um, what's this um, tattoo thing that you wanted to ask me about? Right. Uh, well, I brought this up on another show we do called uh, No Dunks. Mm. Last Friday, um, and I actually stole it from Joe Mandy's um, podcast. Is it a podcast or is it a watch along? It's uh, du- oh, double, double screen. screen. I know. Okay, I now I, I know. Yeah, I yeah. know what you're talking about. Um, Joe Mandy, it's a great guy. He's a friend of the show. Um, and he's been he, on the show. He's been on the show. Absolutely. Um, he's he's been on this show. He's been on both shows. Anyways, um, <laughs> which show am I on right now? Oh yes, is this <laughs> who <kid>? are you? <laughs> who am I? I just want to get back to the to the, the slopes, bro. Ugh, I fucked that up. <laughs> uh, okay, so he he had Darcy Carden on, and mm-hmm. Jason Tatum had just got a brand new tattoo. Uh, Rachel, could you put up that picture when you have a moment, please? Nice white. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so this is the tattoo, and um, mm-hmm. I just wanted to run it by you guys, Rachel and Matt. Uh, because all of us sort of came up with our own versions of this tattoo. So the tattoo for the the, the listening audience is the word life, okay? Mm-hmm. And in each letter, there is a uh, a movie character or a performance by an actor that inspired Jason Tatum over his life, okay? So in the top, the top one, it's a vert, it's written vertically. In the top frame is the letter L. And it's Denzel Washington in the film John Q. Okay? His best film. Is it? I've never seen it. No, sarcasm. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I can't see you, so. <laughs> okay, the second the second letter, I, is Will Smith in Hitch. Also, I've never seen it. And apparently- Also his best film. 
<laughs> and apparently there is an allergic reaction scene in it. So Will Smith is all puffed. He's unrecognizable, really. He's all puffed up. He looks almost beat up, actually. Is mm. that what- he looks like someone slapped him. <laughs> yes. <laughs> is that why it doesn't look like Will Smith on the tattoo? Yeah, yeah. Because he it is a scene in the movie where he has an allergic reaction and becomes all puffy. Why and, would you want that? Weird. Well, I don't know. It means something to Jason Tatum. Okay. The F is Wesley Snipes from White Man Can Jump. That That's a no-brainer. The guy's a basketball player. And then yeah. the final letter, E, is the character Dash, from the really fast kid in The uh, the Incredibles. So Holy shit. I'm one for four see, having seen these movies. Uh, I've, I'm two for four. I've seen White Man Can Jump and The Incredibles. Mm, me too. Okay. So, okay. Anyways, we can get off this, Rachel. Thank you. Oh, check out this oh, sexy, sexy wife. <laughs> uh, so Ryan. my question to both of you is, and this is what I asked the, the guys on No Dunks, mm-hmm. come up with a four-letter word. Yeah. And then what four movie characters would you have in each letter? And one of them has to be animated. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. Do you want, Do you want to hear mine? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Let's okay. hear yours. Okay, we'll start with me. I said this on No Dunks as well. The word is goat, as in greatest of all time. I'm just referring uh-huh. to the greatest of all time movie characters. Withna- uh, Withnail okay, okay. from Withnail and I, played by Richard uh-huh. E. Grant. One of mm-hmm. my all-time favorite performances ever committed to film. Number two, I have Marge Gunderson, Francis McDormand from Fargo. Fargo. A classic, classic role. Oh, now there's a woman that once bought a imitation <laughs> Les Paul at a five and dime. God damn right she I, did. Technically, there should be some distinction between these accents, but oh, I don't know. <laughs> you are an accent. I'm dog. not Richard Little. <laughs> you know, I'm no Frank not. Caliendo, I'll tell you that. Uh, in uh, the A of Goat is Anton Chigurh, played by... Mm. Javier Bardem. And now here's the mm. thing. I realized when I was doing this, when I was reading it out on No Dunks, I have two Coen Brothers movies here. Fargo, uh, No Country yeah, for Old Men. It's a little bit. It's like making a mixtape and putting two U2 songs. <laughs> yeah. So we'll come back to that. And my final one, my final uh, letter is T. And because I was probably had the Incredibles on my mind, I picked Edna, Edna Mode, who is the Q character. She's the sort of uh, she supplies all those superheroes with weapons and uniforms and things like that. Do you uh, think she's the greatest animated ca- character? I mean, there's so many, but yeah, I, I think she's one of the better ones for sure. Okay. So my Coen Brothers conundrum is this: I don't want two Coen Brothers movies, mm-hmm. so I'm swapping out Marge for. <sighs> I want to keep it a woman, so I'm going uh, Miranda Priestly from uh, The Devil Wears Prada. Meryl Streep, the greatest wow. of all time. Yeah. Okay. And so okay. that's my tattoo. So, Matt? It's interesting because it's you've gone some villains and some heroes. Yes. Yes. That's true. Um, yeah, okay. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to go. Okay, do it. That's my it. word is LARF. <laughs> L-A-R-F. I love it. L-A-R-F. <laughs> Okay. Amazing, yeah. Because when you're when you're laughing real hard, oh boy, you're laughing. <laughs> uh, so I just picked um, four, I guess, movie characters that, that like make were f- formative, formative yeah. for me. Okay. All right. So in the L, you got Chris Farley and Tommy Boy. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Great yeah. one. Uh, in the uh, fat guy in a little coat scene. Yes. Perfect. Yes. Okay. Which I learned that thanks to podcasts, I learned that that is something he used to do to annoy David yeah. Spade when they worked together at SNL. He used to come in the office and he used to say, David, turn around. He's like, uh, and just like in the movie, like, you're not going to do fat guy in a little coat, are you? <laughs> no. <laughs> so how fucking cool is that? Like you have an inside joke that, that, that that's that funny and that translates. You know what I mean? I think that should be jokes don't translate. That should be our mission for this show. All of our little skits and bits that we end up doing, we just write them into a road movie and and just shoot shoot a road movie. Let's do that. Uh, In the A, you have Leslie Nielsen in Naked Gun. Yeah. Uh, In the umpire outfit, uh, as Enrico Palazzo. (laughs) Okay. 
Okay. Uh, in the R, Mel Brooks. Okay. This, this is a bit of a, a left field pick here. As Yogurt from Space Oh, Earth. really? Okay. <laughs> yeah, because yogurt. then you got kind of like a Star Wars tie-in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, not kind of. It is directly a Star Wars parody. Yeah. Uh, and then it's also a hat tip to just all the Mel Brooks movies. Sure. You know, Absolutely. All the, all the classics. Yeah. Uh, and he, during, I mean, I think he's maybe only in one scene one part of the movie but it's he is, the, but the merchandising merchandising yeah but he directing space balls yeah so. uh, holding the flamethrower mm-hmm. maybe yeah oh yeah yeah and the f was the hardest one because it's like i didn't want to pick like an adult animation thing yeah and then i was thinking that it's uh, i'm still hemming it on for me like probably it would be robin hood the fox from the the 70s disney oh, movie interesting but I don't know how funny he was. Yeah. I, I don't really. I know I watched that movie a billion times as a kid, but I, so maybe I would say the genie because it's Robin yeah. Williams. Then you get Robin yeah. Williams in there. For sure. Doing Genie's like a great a, an Ed Sullivan. He does a danger field in it. Oh, yeah. Which at 11 years old, oh boy, was I laughing. <laughs> <laughs> I loved danger field when I was 11. He was always on Johnny Carson and stuff. Back yeah, when I, was a kid, I wish so. that was true, but he wasn't. What? For my generation. Oh, for Yeah. 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 <laughs> Uh, honorable or dishonorable mention. I mean, honestly, if I was being honest, I might have had to put Woody Allen on, yeah, like an Annie Hall. But I'm not putting, I'm not tattooing Woody Allen. That's a lot of questions. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Uh, Someone from the Holy Grail, but I didn't know like who specifically or what moment. Uh, Or Mike Myers or Dana Carvey, Wayne's Mm. World. Right. So many choices. Yeah. But boy, do I love to larf. Yeah. Mm. What about Austin Powers for? for Mike Myers. A little older by then, I think. Yeah, and... yeah, true. Okay. Yeah. Great list. Great Thank list. Thank you. Thank you. I'd tattoo that on my body, for sure. Uh, what Did you do one, Rachel? Yeah, but I think I uh, I didn't give it quite the attention it deserves, so you're probably going to shred me. Um... Oh, okay, yeah, go ahead. No, perfect. <laughs> uh, that's literally perfect. Thank uh, you. So I thought I'd get very specific. Um, and I don't have any tattoos to begin with, so I figured maybe I would get a tattoo that was only visible at Christmas time, so it's gonna be Christmas related. What do you? How is that? How do you do that? Well, you do that by you go to a Christmas party and you wear a dress with a the slit, slit, and okay. then you get to see the tattoo on my thigh, maybe. Oh, well, hold on! But what if you're in a bathing suit at some point before that? Oh, shit! Then I'd have you see to what I'm really... saying. Okay, it can't be on the thigh. It has to be in a. Well, what about on a your low, back, maybe? Almost yeah. like mid mid back, so okay. that you wear like a low cut, like low... a tramp stamp. Mm. Well, not that far down above, but... uh, classier. Yeah, it's something. <laughs> but how's that gonna work? It has to be a tramp stamp. It has to be because it's fresh at Christmas, and people are excited to see it if they don't see it all the time. Just like Christmas music, you don't listen to it all the time, but you're excited at Christmas time. Right, right. All right, so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's fine. It's fine. I didn't. And you said you didn't put enough thought into this. <laughs> I was playing pickleball this morning, so I didn't have. I was like, oh shit, I have to do this anyway. Xmas. <laughs> okay, good, okay, good, good. Xmas, good, Xmas, good. Xmas, and it's kind of uh, for the characters from Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer. Oh, what? Okay. All claymation. <laughs> All claymation. So, so not even the animated. I mean, I guess. Claymation is animation. It's but definitely animation. Like, I was thinking, could I put in um, someone from um, Team America World Police? Ooh. And I ultimately said <laughs> no, because no. they're, yeah. Why? they're puppets. You... Jason approved the claymation. Okay, but that's not, but that's marionettes. Is, yeah, yeah, that's true. They're, marionettes, that's not, not an, it's animated. Okay, yeah. fair enough, fair enough. Uh, so, Rudolph. Yeah. He's a rebel. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> I like that about him. He didn't put up with it anymore, and he got out. Okay. okay. Also, Hermie, the elf, another rebel. He wanted to be a dentist. Fuck this shit. Yeah. I'm not making toys. I'm out of here. Right. Okay. So I res- respect, respect. Okay. And I-, I know everyone at home is nodding along, but this is like, I'm literally hearing this information for the first time. <laughs> You've never seen the claymation Rudolph the I- Maybe when I was a tiny child, but like, certainly we don't, we don't revisit it. It's classic. So oh. I don't know anything about this elf that wants to be a dentist. Really? Oh, oh. okay. He's too small. I mean, he he ends up. Spoiler alert: He ends up a dentist <laughs> for elves. He so does. oh yeah yeah that's I'm they, so stupid. The elves, I mean, have, the elves have a whole world. Yeah. He's fine in he his He doesn't path. need to be a 
I, I, I'm centering the human in this, but he doesn't need to, to be a human no. dentist. He could yeah. be an elf dentist. Yeah. yeah. And he's which a, which yeah. probably they need way more because they're probably eating way more candy. Oh, yes. that's all they eat. <clears throat> the, the Keebler kids? Yeah. <laughs> they got fucking cavities for days. <laughs> well, I never even thought of that. I thought just in the North Pole, but you could travel around to all the elves uh, uh, all over the Oh, place. yeah. He's got to do a, a bid in Iceland. A lot of elves over there. It's a fucking trailblazer. Is his name yeah. Hermie? Hermie. Oh, okay. Go on. Uh, I also like Yukon Cornelius. Yeah, kind of yeah. reminds me of my dad. Okay, yeah. A little. Yeah. Okay. I need uh, an explanation. I don't know who that is. He's got a big beard. He's a prospector, and he's always looking for silver and gold. So Santa Claus? <laughs> nope. He's red. Red. Yeah. Red beard. Yeah. So there's two Santa Claus-like figures in this. Well, mm. Santa Claus is more avuncular. The, the, this okay. guy's a, this guy's a bit of a scoundrel, yeah. and he's literally obsessed. Like he throws his pick up in the air, lands in the snow, and he he greedily licks it all off this ice pick, looking for so like trying to taste silver or gold. Okay. Okay. <laughs> the look on your face is pure horror. Speaking of summer of '69, he hasn't yeah. found his spot. Um, and then there's that. My last pick is the about. Well, they don't call him the abominable snowman in that, do they? Yeah, they do. Okay. Well, he's the Yeti. The Yeti. The, yeah. Um, which people just don't get him. They don't understand him. They well, think he's a monster, but really, once they got to know him, he was very helpful, and he found his way. He was the guy who put the star on the tree for all the elves, instead of just fearing him. Hmm, misunderstood. Okay. A lot of misunderstood characters that found their way through perseverance and grit. Hmm. Can I this say, Rachel, good. that this is not a terrible tattoo? And I think that it would work year round. I mean, you could be just be like, "Hey, man, I love Christmas. Go fuck yourself." <laughs> you know what I mean? If you I don't, don't like it, you don't have to look at it. Okay, so don't just show it off at the Christmas party. No, okay. yeah, put it wear it loud and proud right on the arm. Yeah, I honestly an Xmas tattoo, and obviously it's all red and green. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think you got something there. And, and actually, wait, let's stick with you, Rachel, because I got I have something to ask you about. So oh, remember. Yeah. Well, you might have to tell me why. Why were we talking about the Scallop Queen? Oh, we were talking. Uh, it was because a of the, the Rappy Pie. And then, I don't know. Oh, Scallop Capital of the World, Digby, my hometown. Is Digby where you where you grew up? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And there was a thing called the Scallop Queen, which is sort of akin to like a homecoming queen. But they would nominate someone, uh, mm-hmm. a woman. Mm-hmm. And then she would become the scalp queen, and they'd take her on a parade to all, all around town. And it, it was the it highest was, honor. It was a competition, be, though. Okay, a competition. Yeah. And then the winner becomes scalp queen. Mm-hmm. And uh, would would you say it's an honor? Uh, yeah. I mean, everybody. Yeah, you get to ride around on the float and. Yeah. People. Okay. Yeah. Are you? And uh, what else do you do? What are your duties for the year? Yeah. Like, what do you are your have duties? to? Like open the Ford dealership with the, you know, with the big scissors and all that, or? You know, again, I paid no attention to that because it was not my thing. <laughs> so. Okay, well then, I hope you have enough information to help Uh-oh. me understand an article I found from the CBC. Ooh. This article is written in 2015, and uh, it says, organizers with the Digby Gallop days say they'll no longer be a part of the Apple Blossom Festival competition <laughs> because the requirements are too limiting for women who want to participate. Oh, Does this wow. ring any bells? The Annapolis Valley Apple Blossom Festival? Mm-hmm. That's Does this further ring north. any bells? It's further north of Digby. It's a yeah, separate... Yeah, is that your Shelbyville? <laughs> maybe. It's a separate thing. It's not related to the... I guess maybe... The... Oh, sorry. Go on. Tell me more. Well, they... they, they the Like you're... Um, okay, hold on. The entry rules for the Annapolis Valley Apple Blossom Festival, the choosing of Queen Anna Polisa and her princesses, was recently changed to allow participants to live common law and to become pregnant during the year they represent their community. Okay. Married women and young women with children are still not permitted to take part. Dale Kearney, the chairman of Digby Scallop Day, says the revised rules are good, but they don't go far enough. Huh? So Digby will now host its own Scallop Day's queen competition with new rules created a month ago. He said they wanted to be, quote, more with the times. Oh, oh look at us so, all progressive and Digby. Certainly so wasn't when the, I was there. Yeah, okay, so you were living around the oppressive old rules of the Scalp Queen, which were you had to be 18, in grade 12, going into post-secondary education, mm-hmm. not married, no children, no boyfriend, and no fiancé. No boyfriend or fiancé. They want you That's single right. and, ew. Yeah. Pure. Ew. They want you pure. 
That's nasty. Because they sacrifice you at the end? It is kind of a weird thing. They want you unshucked. <laughs> <laughs> Ew. Yeah, your mollusk intact. Sorry. <laughs> um, do you think you could get a report from your mom this year about the festival? Like how it's how it runs in the summer. Yeah, like who won and all that. Because there's really sure. not much online about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can get the lowdown. Maybe we can even organize a visit around the time to really get the. Oh, I'm busy then. I think, but <laughs> yeah, we'll do our <laughs> best. Certainly, uh, we'll certainly do our best to get there. Um, all right. That's Listen the to end next of week's that. show. That's the end of that. It's coming out on Monday. Ah, JD. I... Okay. Well, first let me say this. <laughs> the next episode that comes out is our 100th episode. Woo! We did it. Nice. I didn't think we'd Good get job. this far. Oh, really? Not really, to be honest. Oh. Yeah. Okay. That doesn't make yeah. me feel great, but okay. You keep doing something, and eventually, if you don't <laughs> stop, <laughs> you end up doing a lot of it. Yeah. That's true. Uh, so... I was going to tell you the guest we have on, which I'm very excited about, but I just saw on Instagram that our guest has the flu. Oh my now, the God. guest has not reached out to me to say, I cannot do the show. Okay. Well, we're not going to force her to do the show. No, I know. But do you think I should reach out to her and say, are you still doing the show? Or will that sort of, quote unquote, give her an out? <laughs> should I wait for her to cancel? Huh? Why don't we give it a day? Give it a day. See what okay. happens. See what happens. Okay, hope she gets better. Sending good vibes. Maybe, do you, do you have an elixir that you were talking <laughs> that you could send her? Actually, I do have an elixir, which is actually a sponsor of the show. Uh, oh, one thing I forgot to mention during housekeeping is another uh, perk that you're going to get if you join Patreon, patreon.com slash is this good, is a Christmas playlist. We got to get going on this. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's I, almost Christmas. It was my I suggestion. You, I, I started it off <laughs> and I made you a collaborator. Uh, yeah. I made you a collaborator on, like uh, like the French in the World War II on Spotify. <laughs> and uh, you didn't add anything. Yeah, I haven't added anything yet. I'm going to, though. I'm going to. I was very, very reluctant to. I was like, oh, this is cool. But then I thought, ah, I'm going to step on his toes. Like, you're very particular. We've been in a jukebox war before, and I, I don't want to <laughs> harsh your mellow. I don't want to <laughs> harsh your vibe, man. But, what was the uh, jukebox? Was that at uh, the Double Deuce? Uh, well, when I sang Bad Out of Hell? No, well, we were sort of just enjoying the jukebox, but I feel like uh, back at the Ram and the Rye, we we had like a Oh, jukebox, or uh, uh, no, 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 no. You know where it was? It was that pub you introduced us to. Oh. I think it was on Young Street. Oh, it, yeah, yeah. Duke of Gloucester. The Gloucester, yes. Ooh, yeah, that, oh, that's an awesome pub. Yeah. You think that's still there? I don't know. It must be. I'd love to go there. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write that down. I'm going to Google that after. Yeah, I love uh, that place. If it sucks now, don't blame us, but it was... Uh... <laughs> you know the, what? What uh, the memory I have of Duke of Gloucester? So in our final year, we've talked about it before, we do this practicum, which is like we spend the entire year shooting this thing, and we shot like a pilot. We wrote, produced, shot, edited, yeah. packaged like on a DVD, a pilot. Yeah. It took forever, put so much work into it. The day we finished shooting, so this was a long time ago, so we were filming everything on, um, what were those called, those tapes? They were like digital tapes? They were they were HD tapes. Uh, God, I can't, I, yeah, they're like DVR tapes, but HD. Like Yeah, one they of were the expensive yeah. as fucking hell, yeah. to be honest, in 2004. And uh, so I collected all the tapes once we had finished shooting and I had them and then I put them in my knapsack and they were like, let's go celebrate. We go to the Duke of Gloucester, like 12 pints of Guinness later, yeah. we're like hugging each other like, we fucking did it. We did it. We didn't said it couldn't be done and we did it. Uh, get out, start walking down to my apartment, get about halfway there and I go, oh, fuck the tapes. <laughs> I'd forgotten my my knapsack there. Oh, yeah. Under the bench. Yeah. I ran in. I'm like pounding on the door. I'm like, ah, yeah. Anyways, I got it back. Oh, my God. But how upset would everyone have been? Oh, my God. I would have, you know what I would have done? I'm not proud of this, but I'm just letting you inside my brain. I would have made up a story. Well, you got like, robbed. I, don't know if I would have said I got mugged. <laughs> yeah, I got mugged by um, a student in a different practicum <laughs> <laughs> that really wanted our footage. <laughs> uh, anyway, so we uh, join the Patreon. We will get you a Christmas playlist yes. by this weekend, let's say. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Okay? Mm-hmm. Okay. 
for sure. And, and, and add freely, and then we can, you know, we can edit from there. Okay. But there's no bad ideas. This is like the brainstorm. Okay. Well, I'll start okay. throwing shit in. Throw shit in. Uh, of course, email us at isthisgoodpod at gmail.com. Subscribe everywhere. Leave a review on Apple Podcasts. Even though it's friendly December, you can still leave a review. Mm-hmm. Uh, this was JD and Matt and Rachel reaching out from the great beyond. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye.